This is a twin star telescope optical tube assembly. Um, it is six inch on the top for the aperture and the focal length is 1,400 millimeters or 1.4 meters. Now this is a Newtonian short tube, uh, optical tube, and I do not recommend you buy one. So to get the 1.4 meter um, focal length, you can see it's much less than a meter, um, they essentially are hiding inside the focusing tube, a Barlow tube. The downside is, depending on the quality of those lenses in there, it may not have a very good quality overall. Um, also, it's extremely difficult to collimate this yourself. Um, because those lenses in there mess with a lot of the tools that you typically use. So I tried a collimating cap and it didn't work well for me. Um, I really couldn't see what I was doing and other people online say that it doesn't give you a good collimation. I also have a laser collimator with the 45 degree target and the problem is that when the laser shines through the lenses in here it diverges out and defocuses it. So when it hits the um, mirror at the bottom, when you're looking down through the top, you can see a big spot and you can tell, you know, is it kind of in the center of the mirror or not, but it's not a tiny spot, so it's really hard to tell. Also, this mirror does not come center marked. Now, without doing that, without taking the um, lenses out of the focusing tube, the spot that comes back is just as big as this guy, so you could kind of see that it's in the right area, um, but you can't really prove that it's in the center. Um, it kind of just covers the whole area, and so if it's off-center, obviously you know your way off, but it's hard to get it super accurate. Um, so, it's a lot of work to take those lenses out. You probably don't want to bother doing it if you don't have to, but I'm going to show you how I do it. By removing these two screws, you can free the pinion gear, which is held in place by some of these little shim strips. So don't lose those shim strips because that's what keeps it at the right amount for this cheap plastic mount here. And that frees the rack in the focuser tube assembly. Which can then be removed. Now in the base of this focuser tube, there's this black lens assembly. Um, it has two holes for unscrewing it. You might be able to just twist this with friction from your fingers, but something like these split ring pliers are kind of the easy way to access those two holes and loosen it up. So when you pull this doublet out, now this assembly is straight through. Now, unless you need to focus this guy, you don't need to put the pinion gear back in right now just for laser collimation. All right, so that laser dot on the primary mirror is much smaller and it's going to be a lot easier to use to make sure it's centered on the mirror. It actually looks like it's very centered on the mirror, not that you can tell from this weird angle. Um, but I need to put a center spot on my primary mirror to verify that. Now, I can tell you right now that the spot coming back to the laser collimator target is much more precise. Um, and I could actually turn this down in there in power to see it a lot clearer. Um, so I need to center spot the back mirror and make sure I'm really hitting the center spot of the mirror before I worry about adjusting the angle that their primary mirror in that back is, is taking. Okay, and I have some good news for myself, which is that my laser spot is basically dead center in that white ring I put on there. Anything that's potentially not iron center is probably because I messed up the ring positioning just slightly or the dot positioning just slightly. It's, it's you know, basically right in the center of that mirror. So that means I do not need to modify my secondary mirror settings, which is good because that's harder, the hardest one to modify. Um, but I do need to collimate my primary mirror now. All right, if you're using the pinhole or collimation cap to look through this guy, right now my primary mirror and the secondary mirror, the secondary mirror is not centered on the primary mirror. Um, also, if you look close to the center, that little round white spot is not centered in the secondary mirror. So the mirror holder has three 
pairs of screws, six total. Three of the screws go into a threaded here and they hold it on. The other three screws just kind of butt up against this pad and by adjusting them you can say how far away it sits up. Now there is absolutely no spring or rubber gasket on these guys, so the only way I could figure out how to adjust this is to use gravity as my spring, put it on here, use a laser collimator to adjust it where I want it, and then tighten down the three holding screws. Alright, I went ahead and put these holding screws down pretty far, but there's still a gap there, such that if I tighten these adjustment screws, it can go up and down a little bit. Um, these guys are all the way out. That's basically the way I found them. Um, I have put a white sharpie mark on the adjustment screws so I can keep the two of them straight in my head. So right now you can see a fine dot on the laser collimator. Notice this guy here is still loosey-goosey and the scope is upside down from its normal operation. So if gravity was flipping this guy up, this is where it would be. Otherwise, it'd be down there. So you can see, you know, that's a whole one line or one circle difference there. Um, so ideally, you would have shimmed this guy so that doesn't happen. Um, what I'm going to do initially is I'm just going to hold it like this because that's the way gravity would be pulling on this guy with an eyepiece on it. Um, collimate it like that and then worry about shimming this later. So at this point, it's basically trial and error. Um, you tighten a screw a little bit and see which way that guy moves. If it moves the right way, keep going until it goes towards the center. Any two screws should be able to adjust them back and forth. Um, so just basically play around with it until that dot's in the center. Okay, so the dot's in the center, at least when this eyepiece is holding down, flexing down. Um, after I shim this, I'm really going to have to do this adjustment again. Um, but what I'm going to do now is tighten up the holding screws and hopefully do it in such an even way that it doesn't move. But I have to watch it while I'm tightening up the holding screws. You can see there it moved a bit, just tightening up the holding screws. Now I tightened up a different one, it kind of moved back. And I tightened up a third one, it moved back a little bit more. So we don't really need these holding screws super tight, just barely finger tight, but tight enough to put pressure on the adjustment screws so they're not moving around. So you can see there it's off by about one ring, but if I used gravity, that's where it would be. Now it's not quite at the edge there, so I'm going to see if I can move it closer to where I want it to be. And I loosened a holding screw and tightened the adjustment screw. So that looks to be about where it should be, that when gravity's holding this thing down, it'll be exactly centered. All right, I rotated the scope around to a more standard usage angle, and you can see that is inside the black dot, at least. So looking through the collimation cap after laser collimating it, um, you can see that the secondary is centered within the ring of the primary, and the little white dot is very close to the center of the secondary as well. Um, so, you know, the, you can do the same thing with the collimation cap. You just have to look through it and then go adjust and look through it and go adjust. So it, it's really labor-saving to have that laser dot that you can watch it move left, right, up, down as you adjust the screws. One thing left to do is to screw this lens back into the end of the focuser here, put the focuser back in, and then put the pinion gear and wheels, control wheels on, and the scope will hopefully be functional with a little better collimation. So remember this guy has these little strips in there, um, shim strips, and so the openings come to the outside. And it takes a little force to get that in through the plastic like that, and you might have to adjust this in and out a little bit to make the gears mesh up. 
and then you put your cover back on with the screws. Now if you're wondering what this laser collimator looks like after you put the lenses back in the focuser, you can see it's all spread out there. This is still loosey-goosey, so if I move it around you can see the spot goes all over the place. Um, but when I hold it in place and tighten up the um, little thumb screw, it's mostly centered around the black spot. I wouldn't want to collimate it with those lenses in there, however. Now you should never ever turn a Newtonian upside down without first verifying that the clips actually will hold the mirror in place without relying on gravity. Um, I have a cheap one so things clipped in there really good. Um, I wouldn't have to turn this upside down to adjust it except for the fact that there is absolutely no springs or rubber grommets are in the hold down screws. Um, and so I found it easiest to put this thing completely vertically so that the only thing holding this in place was gravity. Um, and so then I could use the three adjustment screws to just push it up away from those support pads and adjust the tilt. And once I was happy with how it was tilted, then I would screw in the um, retaining screws and that pulls this ring in against the adjustment screws um, and holds it in place. Now, I have found that I can adjust it without turning it completely upside down. The trick is just you have to adjust both screws at the same time. So if you want this to come out, you release that screw maybe a quarter turn and you tighten this screw a quarter turn and it pushes it out, you know, one quarter's turn worth. And if you want to go in, you loosen this screw and you tighten that screw. So by adjusting the two screws opposite directions just a little bit each time, you can tilt this thing around um, even without springs on it. Now you could also buy some springs, maybe get slightly longer screws here, put springs on these screws so that the springs are forcing it against these three, the three adjustment screws, um, and then you could just move the adjustment screws around to adjust it.